Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by a poet named David Russell Wagoner, David Wagoner. He was born in 1926, and he is an American poet who has been nominated twice for the National Book Award. He was the chancellor of the Academy of American Poets from 1978 to 1999. He even had a novel that was made into a movie by Francis Ford Coppola of The Godfather fame. The poem that I'm going to read today is called Falling Asleep in a Garden. It's, a, it's another good summer poem, I think. This is how it goes. All day the bees have come to the garden. They hover, swivel in arcs, and whirling, light on stamens heavy with pollen, probe and revel inside the yellow and red starbursts of dahlias, or cling to lobelia's blue-white mouths, or climb the speckled trumpets of foxgloves. My restless eyes follow their restlessness as they plunge bodily headfirst into treasure, gold-fevered among these horns of plenty. They circle me, a flowerless patch with nothing to offer in the way of sweetness or light against the first omens of evening. Some, even now, are dying at the end of their few weeks, some being born in the dark, some simply waiting for life. But some are dancing deep in their hives, telling the hungry, the sun will be that way, the garden this far, this is the way to the garden. They hum at my ear, and I wake up, startled, seeing the early stars beginning to bud in constellations. The bees have gathered somewhere like petals closing for the coming of the cold. The silhouette of a sphinx moth swerves to drink at a flower head. The night blooming moon opens its pale corolla. There's a lot going on in this poem, and I'm so fascinated by the final word, the corolla. The night blooming moon opens its pale corolla, it says. So first of all, there's the obvious bit that he's bringing together the flower and the moon. The night blooming moon opens its pale corolla. But there's also the very specific use of the word corolla, which I did not know uh, before looking into this poem a little bit more. But the corolla is, is the petal on, on the flower. And he uses such a degree of specificity. You know, the science of the flower comes out in so many different instances here. Um, we get not just very specific kinds of flowers, which is common, you know, in, in various poetry, flowers and birds and trees, and there's a lot of specificity in, the, in poetry. So we do get, yes, the lobelia and, and the uh, foxglove and the dahlia and, and, and so forth. But we're also getting, getting into some scientific terms, right? We're getting things like stamens even, and we're getting corolla, as I said, and, and so forth. But I think I'm most fascinated in this poem. By the way, all that comes together in a sort of, sort of narrative structure in a sense, in that it starts with the daytime, and the bees have come to the garden. And he's growing more and more restless as, he, as he's watching the bees. His restless eyes follow their restlessness. So as they're moving about, pursuing something, you know, pursuing uh, their treasure, they're on a treasure hunt. And their restlessness, they can't sit still. They have to get to it. They have to get to it. And his eyes are restless too. And the bees are following him. They're looking to see if he has treasure, but he, he is a flowerless patch. He has nothing to offer in the way of sweetness or light against the first omens of evening. And so there in that, the end of that second stanza, this is a four stanza poem. There at the end of that second stanza, we begin to get a shift, even just in the narrative. And the poet brings night on. And as the night comes on, we then begin to think about the bees dying at the end of their first few weeks. Some are being born, but some are still dying. And even as that's happening, some are thinking of the next day, of where the sun's going to be. And that's when he falls asleep. He falls asleep to the hum at his ear of the bees. Like a lullaby, I, I think, is kind of what he's getting at. But then he wakes up, startled. And the early stars, the, the stars of the, the late evening, are budding into constellations. The bees go somewhere, they gather against the cold. And a moth swerves to drink at a flower head. He sees it as a silhouette against the, against the late evening. 
and the night blooming moon opens its pale corolla. And I think it's at that point that the, the, the suggestion that he becomes like the bee, in a sense. So all day he watches the bee, and then at night the bees go away, and he wakes up to the moon unfurling itself, um, unfurling its, its uh, beautiful petals. I don't want to say too much about what I think that might mean, because that ruins the fun for you. But there's a lot of different images here, a lot of different uh, uh, places that this poem takes us. And, uh, you know, it's one of those poems that on the surface seems maybe simple to some. Um, there's a lot going on, a lot of different complex images and lines and stuff, but um, it's more than just, you know, the classic student's response where they say, oh, it's just about a man watching bees, right? And then he falls asleep. Reminds me a little bit of After Apple Picking um, by Robert Frost in that way. But here once more is Falling Asleep in a Garden by David Wagoner. All day the bees have come to the garden. They hover, swivel in arcs and whirling, light on stamens heavy with pollen, probe and revel inside the yellow and red starbursts of dahlias, or cling to Lobelia's blue-white mouths, or climb the speckled trumpets of foxgloves. My restless eyes follow their restlessness as they plunge bodily headfirst into treasure, gold fevered among these horns of plenty. They circle me, a flowerless patch with nothing to offer in the way of sweetness or light against the first omens of evening. Some, even now, are dying at the end of their few weeks, some being born in the dark, some simply waiting for life, but some are dancing deep in their hives, telling the hungry, the sun will be that way, the garden this far, this is the way to the garden. They hum at my ear. And I wake up, startled, seeing the early stars beginning to bud in constellations. The bees have gathered somewhere like petals closing for the coming of the cold. The silhouette of a sphinx moth swerves to drink at a flower head. The night blooming moon opens its pale corolla. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. Be back tomorrow with another poem for you. 